That was a great cocktail. I bet you that's the one that most people would like. Aloha, folks. Welcome to part three of the inadvertent Mai Tai saga. If you've been following this three-part series, I, I didn't know it was a three-part series until, and I guess until now. Two episodes ago, we started with the Trader Vic's Mai Tai. And in that episode, I said, there's no other Mai Tai. It's just the Trader Vic's Mai Tai. And then I remember the recipe on the back of the Don Ho glass. And I was like, oh yeah, there's another recipe. And of course that glass has history in the legend of the international marketplace in Waikiki, in the history of Tiki, in pop culture with Don Ho. I figured the way that we could cap this series off is by doing a Mai Tai by the nemesis of Trader Vic, Don the Beachcomber. It's rumored that Don Beach created a cocktail called the Mai Tai Swizzle in 1933. Apparently he didn't think it was very good and he dumped it. But that was unbeknownst to Victor Bergeron. I don't even think it ended up on the menu. Maybe that was a tale that Don Beach came up with to say, uh, Vic, I was there first. I don't know. But all of the years that the Hula Girls performed at Don the Beachcomber in Sunset Beach, I remember thinking the Mai Tais there were incredible. The first time I went, I was like, uh, this isn't a Mai Tai, made a big deal of it online and swiftly got smacked down. And they're like, no, 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 Don the Beachcomber had a different Mai Tai. And I was, even back then, that was like, what, 13, 12, 13 years ago now? Even back then, I was like, yeah, but Trader Vic's is the Mai Tai. It's the Mai Tai. Regardless, I grew to love the Don the Beachcomber Mai Tai. So this episode and the last episode basically go against everything that I've said about the Mai Tai. That Trader Vic's is the only one. I think that that is the Mai Tai. I think there are variations, and as long as you call them by the variation name, I think we're all good. So this is Don the Beachcomber's Mai Tai Swizzle. In doing research, I found that Don Beach was so uninterested in the Mai Tai that he put it in the not illustrated section of his menu. So I was looking, I was like, how do we garnish this? How do we do the whole thing? Turns out he, he didn't even bother. He's like, yeah, people are gonna buy the Mai Tai, but..." It's not something we want to feature. We want to feature things like the mystery gardenia with the ice shell, or the navy grog with the ice cone, or the pie eye served in a pineapple. So there was a book that was put out in 2001 by Phoebe Beach, which is Don Beach's ex-wife. Maybe it was his widow. Well, it, they were all his widow, I guess, right? Because he passed. But I think he had several ex-wives. So she and her new husband wrote this book. I would have been like, honey, uh, you really want to write a book about your ex-husband? Like with with me here? But Don Beach was an exceptional character, so I certainly worthy of a book. This book has to be double checked on every recipe. I think there's it's a it's a great guide, but there are better resources to cross-reference. This is the story about the original Mai Tai. It was at the original Don the Beachcomber restaurant in Waikiki in the High Talking Chief's hut that a very special original Beachcomber Rum Concoction. First served in his bar in Hollywood in 1933, was reintroduced to the public. The drink was the Mai Tai. The Mai Tai has since become so well known and popular worldwide that boats have been named after it. Restaurants, nightclubs, and bars have also been named Mai Tai. And of all the exotic tropical drinks, it remains the most popular and screwed up. I, mm among the many millions of tourists and visitors to the islands. The Beachcomber's pupil, Vic Bergeron, AKA Trader Vic. The Beachcomber's pupil, mm. for years claimed to be the originator of the mixture. Oh, this is getting contentious. But Trader Vic eventually admitted that the Beachcomber had invented it. In a letter to Don Chapman, of the Honolulu Advisor, the well-known syndicate columnist Jim Bishop, who knew both Don Beach and Vic Bergeron quite well, wrote the following regarding the invention of the Mai Tai. In probably 1970 or 71, Don and I were with Vic at Vic's in San Francisco. In the friend-foe relationship Don and Vic had, Vic said in effect that night, blankety blank, Don, I wish you'd never come up with that blankety blank thing. It's caused me a lot of arguing with people. Then Vic looked at me and said, Jim, this blankety blank did do it. I didn't. What? And so with his own words, Trader Vic finally settled the question of who invented the Mai Tai. Oh man. Trader Vic has also printed the following on one of his menus. I salute Don the Beachcomber as the outstanding rum connoisseur of 
our country. Benny Supnit, who started as a busboy with the Beachcomber before working his way to head bartender for all of the Beachcomber establishments, will tell you, when it comes to tropical drinks, it's all from Don the Beachcomber. Oh man, what do you think about that? I wanna start a conversation in the comments below because I don't know about that. So, in 1970 or 71, this columnist was with Vic and Don at one of Vic's places in San Francisco, and Vic admitted to him that Don invented it. I think that might have been taken out of context because in our bartender's guide from 1972, Vic goes, no dude, it was all me. And as you will see, this recipe is wildly different from Vic's. So Vic named the thing, he had the whole story and everything, it was 1944. The Mai Tai Swizzle wasn't even on the menu at Don the Beachcombers. So, I don't know about this. But I haven't had this cocktail in a long time, so I'm very excited to try the Don the Beachcomber Mai Tai. And for this cocktail, we will be using limes, white grapefruit, falernum from BG Reynolds, Cointreau, Angostura bitters, Pernod, Bacardi 8 for the light rum, and Caruba Dark for the dark Jamaican rum. And away we go. We're gonna start with three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. One ounce of grapefruit juice. There's one ounce right there. One half ounce of Cointreau. And this is an orange liqueur. Quarter ounce of Falernum from BG Reynolds. Oh man, I love that smell so much. And it's such a typical taste from Dawn Beach. Whoops. Quarter ounce of Falernum. Falernum is a mix of ginger, clove, almond, and lime. It is blissful. One and a half ounces of dark Jamaican rum. and one ounce of a gold rum. We're gonna be using the Bacardi 8 here. Finally, a cork. Six drops of Pernod. There we go. And Pernod has kind of that licorice kind of flavor profile to it. Not my favorite thing, but I like it when it's in context. And then, ooh and then one dash of bitters. And that is the cocktail. Okay, some ice from Sonic. I'm gonna bring it over here for once. What do you think about that? And typical of most Don the Beachcomber cocktails, we will be using the vintage Hamilton Beach top-down mixer. Just about six to eight seconds there. And we will be using the glass that I got from all of my years of performing at Don the Beachcomber in Sunset Beach. Look at that. A beautiful amber hue. Great. Okay, we're gonna need to cut a pineapple wedge for the garnish. Okay, for the garnish, we're just gonna shoot this through that guy like there. He will go on top of this. I'm gonna slide a maraschino cherry on next to it. Okay. And then in the book it says something like garnish with four leaves on a mint stick or something. I don't know how accurate that is. I don't know if that's really the way it was. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the mint a little bit of a whack to wake up the scent. And then we're just gonna slide this back behind here. And I think that probably looks pretty cool. And so from the 1950s in the international marketplace, in Waikiki, this is Don the Beachcomber's Mai Tai Swizzle. Let's give this guy a try. Oh man, that's good. Wow. Wow. See, this doesn't taste anything like Trader Vic's Mai Tai. This is a whole separate cocktail. And I wish people that created new cocktails would just name them something else. Even back in the 1950s, Don Beach was like, oh, we can just call this thing the Mai Tai. Like, nobody cares. They just want to order a Mai Tai. They just want to order a tropical drink and we'll give them this thing and it's delicious. So yeah, this is the Mai Tai. Uh, but Vix is the Mai Tai. You know what I mean? 
It's so well balanced, but it's got like a sharp edge to it, kinda. Kind of a little bit of licorice in the back from the Pernod. The Falernum is heavy in the drink, so it's got kind of a spice to it a little bit. I definitely taste the Cointreau. Maybe it's the Cointreau that's doing that sharp thing because Cointreau is a very sharp orange flavor. And then the rums, you can definitely taste the rums, but man, that's a good drink. That's a really good drink. You guys should make that one at home. You should make all three of them. You should make the Vix 1944 one. Then you should make the Don Ho back of the glass recipe one, the suck em up, Don Ho suck em up Mai Tai. And then you should make this one. Tell me which one you like the best. I'm super curious. As far as a Mai Tai goes, I'm always gonna give it to Vic. But all three cocktails are super delicious in their own right, so I don't know. If you're just arriving here for the first time and you haven't seen the previous Mai Tai episodes, start with uh, the 1944 Trader Vic's one. I think it's titled like Everybody Screws This Drink Up or something, or, and, uh, and in that, <laughs> And in that video, I even screwed it up too because you're supposed to use rock candy syrup, not simple syrup. Rock candy syrup has three to one sugar to water. Simple syrup has one to one. So even I screwed that up. And I try to be so meticulous with the recipes because I want to pass them on to you guys correctly. It's a good drink. Folks, once again, thank you for joining me on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate the views and the support. If you did enjoy this, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Hitting that like button really does help. And uh, ring the bell. Oh, ring the bell. There's a bell. Oh God, that was so late here right now. I shouldn't have done that. Ring the bell. The bell will notify you when I post a new video. But I always post them on Friday nights at 6.30 Pacific Standard Time, so Either you know that or you don't, but hit the, hit the bell. Oh, also, people have been asking me. I think it's so funny when people are like, oh yeah, people have been asking me what my beauty secrets are. And it's like, nobody's asking you your beauty secrets. People have been asking me if I'm gonna start a Patreon. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna start a Patreon. We'll figure out what kind of specific stuff that I can do for, for people who wanna subscribe. But at this point, this video stuff takes so, so, so much time out of my life just to put these things together. But I'm not making any money on these things aside from merch. So, I mean, once in a while, people will send me a bottle of rum or some mixers or whatever, but believe me, nobody's getting rich from this. If you do want to support me, if you do want to contribute a dollar a month, something like that, for only a dollar a month, you can help Spike keep creating these videos. Cue the Sarah McLaughlin music. No, don't do that. That's sad. I don't. I don't like thinking about those uh, the sad dogs. But if you would like to contribute, I would sincerely appreciate you considering becoming a sponsor for a dollar a month or ten dollars a month. The option is there. Don't feel obligated. But if you do want to help out, thank you so much because that is quite the incentive to keep going. A couple of times I thought about stopping. I got to be honest. A couple of times I was like, dude, this is taking over my life. And what, like, am I getting rich from it? And my buddy Josh was like, yeah, but you enjoy it. And I was like, yeah, it's true, I do. But at what cost, you know? I could be uh, I could be out throwing the Frisbee with my dog. Well, not throwing it back and forth, but you know, throwing it for, well, he doesn't even chase the Frisbee. It's funny, there's a quote on the back of this glass, and I don't know how many of you are super familiar with Don the Beachcomber, but one of his most famous quotes was, if you can't go to paradise, I'll bring paradise to you. And that's what I hope I'm achieving by doing these videos for all of us here. And uh, I hope you dig them. Cheers from Don the Beachcomber at the International Marketplace in Waikiki, Hawaii. Time traveling with Spike. It's me. And of course that glass has history in the legend of Tiki. I also wanted to say thanks to my friend and pinup Miss Tara. Hopefully you guys enjoyed Tara last week. She had all kinds of stories about being a uh, projectionist at movie theaters and a pinup model and her exploits, her, uh, exploits, her adventures at Viva Las Vegas, all kinds of stuff. She was a lot of fun. So thank you again, Tara, for joining us. The insane thing would be to compare the three Mai Tais. Like what's your favorite Mai Tai? Because the three Mai Tais, the Trader Vic's 1944 Mai Tai, or I guess it was a little bit later because it was um, with a blend of rums, not the 17-year-old J. Ray nephew rum. 
That Mai Tai is so different from the Don Ho Suck Em Up Mai Tai, which again is so different from the Don the Beachcomber Mai Tai. So it's like, it's kind of more like, which drink do you like? Not which Mai Tai do you like? If you're gonna do which Mai Tai do you like, it'd be more like different Orgeats and Orange Curacao's and rums to create the 40, 1944 Mai Tai. I think, I think that'd be like the right way to do it. There is another book that was put out. When the hell was this put out? It was at the original Don the Beachcomber. That a very special original Beachcomber rum con concoction that a very special original Beachcomba rum con concoction. God damn, that's hard to say. That a very special original Beachcomber rum con concoction. That a very special original Beachcomba rum concoction. Concoction. But I am curious, if you made all three of these drinks from the show, which one is your favorite? And I don't even know which one's my favorite because this is super good. The one with Tara was so good. And then the the, four, the 44 Trader Vic's Mai Tai was incredible. Like, like it always is. As with most cocktails from like the 30s, 40s, early 50s, the cocktails are really complex and delicate. And that Mai Tai is such a work of art. It, it really is. I don't know that everybody would love that though. I love it because I like complex cocktails. I tried over 50 tiki cocktails now. That's like bizarre to think about, isn't it? It's a lot of drinking. It's a lot of drinking. But it's not like I drink 50 every week. It's like I, I've had 50 in over a year. I haven't had Don's ver- God, I gotta move this. Cointro? Cointro? How the hell do you pronounce that? Cointro? 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 I think it's Cointro. And I try to be so manic- and I try to be so meticulous. Oh my God. If it's late at your house right now and the bell's gonna make that kind of noise, then probably don't, but hit the one on the YouTube thing because yeah, it'll let you know when I upload a new video. And tell a friend, for God's sakes, tell a friend. Oh, by the way, this bell was given us by the Maritime Society in Long Beach, by the shipping yards or something, for performing at one of their things. Super rad, huh? And then we used it in God, what is going on here? And then we use it in the music video for the Enchanted Sea. Yeah, pretty rad. And it's also on the song, the recording for the Enchanted Sea. Go watch that video. It's good. It's a good one, I, prom I promise. Dear Lord, that was loud. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so the Trader Vic's Mai Tai is like this delicate, really well-balanced tummy warmer. The second one. The Don Ho Suck Em Up Mai Tai is probably the most accessible out of all of them because it has lime juice, orange juice, and pineapple juice. Kind of the holy trinity of tourist cocktail mixes. Whereas the holy trinity of like Mai Tai cocktail juices is like orange juice, lime juice, and white grapefruit, I think it is. When you bring in pineapple juice with orange juice and lime juice, it gets very, easy, but it was still kind of a complex cocktail with Orgeat and Orange Curacao. That was a great cocktail. I bet you that's the one that most people would like. And then this one too, this is such a good cocktail. I don't like, you can't say that it's bad. You can't say that it's third place either. It's just, it's it's a different thing. Yeah, it's just a different thing. It's super good. All right, I guess it's done. I guess the show's done. Ba-dum-bum-ba-dum-bum.